Hey everyone, welcome to this video. Today we're going to be in Craigavon. 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 Interesting name. In Northern Ireland, just a little bit outside of Belfast, at a restaurant called The Roadhouse. So they have a burger challenge, which they call <laughs> the fattest fish turd. You know what I'm saying? If you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying. I'm not gonna say it. Um, so this challenge features multiple pounds of beef, a whack of cheese, guys. We have basically fried potatoes. We have fried chicken on here. We have so much stuff. I'm gonna go through it in detail at the restaurant. But essentially, we are in the quest for 100 pounds. Yes, we're a 100 quid prize, um, which is probably worth like, I don't know, maybe 100 and 20 or 30 American, something like that. So nice, nice, nice prize. Um, we do have 30 minutes to complete the challenge. If we do, we get the 30 pound meal for free. And if we can complete it in that 30 minutes, not only do we get it for free, we get that 100 pounds. So that's it. I'll get you the rest of the details here momentarily. And yeah, guys, Northern Ireland. Super cool to be here, Belfast area. That, this challenge has also only been completed once ever, once ever. So. Definitely difficult. Of that, let's go eat. Hey everyone, real quick, I want to thank sponsor today's video being Cook Unity, a chef collective. So Cook Unity is actually the first chef to consumer platform delivering freshly prepared pre-selected meals directly to your door weekly. Cook Unity connects a diverse group of talented chefs that make delicious, innovative meals in regional micro kitchens, not just large, you know, warehouse production sites. What's really cool is the chefs actually cook the meals using real ingredients, nothing artificial, with humanely raised meat and organic ingredients when possible. They offer a wide variety of different meals, including seven different dietary preferences, such as vegan, paleo, gluten-free. The meals are delivered fully cooked. So all I have to do is heat them up and there's no more mess in cooking. The subscription is super flexible and you can pause, skip, or cancel at any time. The chefs really focus on flavor and innovation so you really get a taste of the world. I've been using cooking for a while so I definitely know my personal favorites. For example, I have Chef Ruben Garcia's Chipotle Maple Glazed Salmon with green beans and a mango pico de gallo, which was made in Flushing Ave, Brooklyn, New York. Here we have one of my personal favorites, which is the grilled chicken with a carrot thyme puree and sauteed mushrooms made on Flushing Ave in Brooklyn, New York. And then we have Chef Andre Mendes's crispy pan fried Cajun salmon with a fresh avocado sauce and a cucumber salsa, also made on Flushing Ave in Brooklyn, New York. They're ultra convenient and I can always choose the lower calorie ones so I can fit it into my diet very easily. But right now, if you go to cookunity.com forward slash Hanson, you can actually save 50% off your first order by using my code Hanson50. So click the link down in the description below. Go to cookunity.com forward slash Hanson. Use that code and save 50% off your Cook Unity orders today. Hi everybody, so here we are with the burger, the fattest bass turd. Two words. Fattest bass turd. It's not two words. I'm saying it two words. So we're going to have 30 minutes, like we said, to complete the challenge. Um, our good friend Katina is currently the only one to have officially beaten it at 29, I believe 45, so just barely got that mark. Um, so hopefully we will also be able to complete it. It's definitely a difficult one. So what we have on here to be specific, we have four eight ounce beef patties, we have eight pieces of cheese, we have four what they call potato scallions. So these are essentially like really, really large kind of hash browns, I guess you could call them. Also, yeah, I call them hash browns, like potato patties, essentially. Then we have a giant chicken breast. This thing weighs over one pound itself. Four of their oversized house-made onion rings. We have this full of lettuce, or lettuce and tomatoes. They call it salad here. Um, and then we have two of their uh, eight-inch sausages and or hot dogs. They kind of refer to as both. And Eight strips of bacon, I think that is everything. Um, you do get to pick your sauces. I went with ketchup and their Cajun sauce, which sounds really delicious. Um, so yeah, like we said, 30 minutes, and you get the 30 pound meal for free. Uh, so that's about that. Oh, and 100 pounds, 100 pounds. So free meal and cash, so nothing wrong with that. So that was get started here, just momentarily. And what I have been told and have been instructed to do with this burger is specifically to deconstruct it because apparently, uh, it's best to start with some of the meats down here, and they very are very well insulated. So I'm definitely excited for this, guys. I haven't eaten yesterday. I'm actually really hungry, and 
I know they said they get these uh, beef patties made specifically for them or get from a local butcher. So that it sounds good to me. I'm all about that beef life. Cows are my favorite animals because they are very tasty. I'll put it that way. All right, we well, might as well take it apart a little bit. Take this off. Onion rings. Burger, I'll kind of put that there. Oh my gosh, the size of this chicken, everybody, and all the bacon. Look at this. I don't know if the bacon off. Look how big that is. That is giant. Put that right there. And uh, I'll just kind of get down. Oh my gosh, there's a pile of cheese and potatoes. Oh, geez, that is steaming hot. And, uh, and, and hot dogs slash sausages. Let me put that there. I'll put that right here. All right, looking good. No shortage of food. Here's our beef patties. Uh, I might actually just get rid of this rod while we're at it. Probably easier. Thank you. Amazing, guys. So we have a pile of food here, which is a very large burger. All right, so let's actually get started. Um, we got an official timer going. So let's say the count of, let's say uh, three, two, one. Cheers. Let's go. Mm. Very nice fish and beef. It reminds me of like um, almost like a meatloaf with all the spices in it. Mm. Mm. Cooked perfectly, very tender. Very, very tender. I like that a lot. Not the flavor I was expecting, but very, very good. Some people are not meatloaf fans. Some of them don't love meatloaf. I like meatloaf. And burgers. Hey everyone, welcome to Zuto. Today we are here taking on the biggest fish turd fish turd burger guys here at the roadhouse so definitely a sizable challenge and one which i will say the camera really does not do it justice sometimes a camera you know does a challenge justice and this is one it definitely does not this thing was massive over seem to hop up man made it so tender the patties, the way all the weight of everything just kind of like compressed together. Man, this thing was dense. I thought you were going to try the ketchup. It's just a happy boat. It was incredibly heavy and had lots of different components. Very good. I'm going to give the Cajun sauce a try as well. So, you know, we kind of already went through everything from beef to chicken to basically hash browns to onion rings to sausages slash hot dogs. Um, and all I got to say is there was a lot of different items here. Nice season on it. I definitely don't get like a Cajun Creole flavor. It's still very good though. One thing I did really appreciate is the food quality. The hot dogs here, you're coming from like a local, um, you know, butcher, a local provider. It was like a really nice um, kind of sausage thing. It wasn't, you know, commercialized. The beef patties as well were coming from a local provider. We are coming up three minutes in. And I was really hoping that I would be able to actually get a try all these amazing looking and smelling items. Uh, the shop itself is a takeaway um, or a takeout spot like generally they actually only have seating in this restaurant um, for the challenge so you have to schedule it in advance all the skippers of the video probably think mom's done the food literally no it's all right here all right but these patties down those were amazing. I love these sausages next. They are super juicy looking. 
and or maybe in the summertime maybe they have I don't know maybe one seat maybe they put a seat outside I don't really know but definitely a, a pretty unique spot to be doing a food challenge right in front of the counter definitely a pork sausage I'm just like a bratwurst. Very delicious though. Of course, like we said, we were hoping to get that free burger, that 100 pound prize, which is about 130-ish, 125, $130 American um, for those who were curious. Um, but yeah, like that, pretty straightforward. Definitely a quality challenge. Uh, the staff were very, very friendly as well, so I really appreciate that. Big old chicken breast. I do love them big breast. Seriously, this is massive, massive, massive. We got bacon on top. I'm trying about the bacon. All right, crunch. Mm. Very tender. Soft. It reminds me of what I call like a fish and chip batter, also like a beer batter, which is actually fantastic. The place is known for its uh, fish and chips in addition to having big burgers like this one, um, but not just this challenge. They actually have the smaller version of this called the fish turd, and then this is the biggest. That chicken must be marinated, marinated though, that was juicy. Or fattest fish turd. Um, which the fish turd used to be the challenge and then they upgraded it to this biggest or fattest fish turd <laughs> and uh, this challenge originally because this is like the second rendition of this challenge this challenge originally had um, some fries with it and I think a couple like chicken nuggets kinds of things but this is the current challenge they offer now and uh, we did actually weigh this thing and this uh, burger like excluding the stand it was on was upwards of seven pounds which is absolutely insane um, to have you know just a burger weighing that much so like I said lots of food lots of ingredients but that everybody let's tune on in let's see what happens and hopefully we can complete this challenge I didn't even use that much ketchup. Delicious. I'm gonna try this potato, potato scalloping. Sorry, scallop potato. We are 7.45 in. Oh yeah. This is a hash brown, but it is huge. These also weighed over half a pound each. Actually, I like the batter out that they have on these. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Fish and chip style batter. I definitely almost got more of a Carolina vinegar sauce of the uh, Cajun. It was very nice. I'm here for the show. Scott, Thank you. Do a great job. Scott just wanted his cameo appearance. I know this is actually really, really nice. Is there so much diversity on this? I have, like, you don't get sick of the flavor. We're just over 11 minutes in. This is so tasty, even like with the potatoes and bacon and bread. Absolutely the best tasting hash brown thing 
for at least a long time. Well, healthy vegetables usually eat these first, but. Twelve fifty a.m. Very delicious. The remainder of the food is all right here. Half a bun. Oh, I just bit my tongue. Oh, that's so good. It's not. Yeah. All right, guys. I'm gonna hold my tongue. Onions. And if you made it to this point in the video, thank you so much for not skipping. You are not one of the skippers. But let's play a joke on the skippers. It's been a little while since we have done this. So I want you to comment down below, dude, nice granny panties. Or you could say something like, oh my gosh, Joel wears granny panties. Have fun with it. Then the people that just skipped through the video and are not as awesome as you will have to go back and try to find the point in the video where I was wearing granny panties. So thank you so much for watching, thank you for liking, thank you for commenting, and thank you for subscribing. And with that, let's get to the video. And hope you enjoy my granny panties. So I have these fortune and a half. I enjoyed that way too much. I literally, I kind of just took my time with it. Man, that was good. Mm. I would definitely order one of these. Fat bastards. With smaller version. You don't need to eat this much. If you want to try the challenge, get a hold of them, they do need those. And we're done. At least time was about 15, 13, something like that. Guys. Honestly, that is the best burger I've had in all of Northern Ireland. I can say that 100% with confidence. It's very, very good. I very much enjoyed that challenge. That being said, we do get the meal for free. We also get 100 pounds, which is pretty cool. Oh, excuse me. That's coming our way. I, I got a little bottle. Yeah, sure. All right, I'll take it. Thank you, my friend. Look at that, guys. Pound sterlings. For anybody wondering. That being said, like I said, that was absolutely delicious. Thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed that. Wait, far exceeded my expectations. Um, this came as a recommendation from our good friend Randy Santel at Continue Eats Kilos. They both did this challenge. And so that's also another variation of this challenge, um, which had, which is the old version, this is the new version. So just kind of went with what's going modern. Um, but no complaints, guys. Let me know down below if you think I should come back and do two in one time, because I would have eaten two of those. That was. So good, so good. But uh, yeah, like I said, definitely stopped by Roadhouse. I think they won best menu in the country, like all of Northern Ireland here recently. And no, they won accolades for fish and chips and all that good stuff. And I tell you what, I may be speaking positive, but I promise you, they're not paying me. This is not endorsed, not sponsored, etc. This is honestly just me being very straightforward. I thoroughly enjoyed this challenge. I may even go with the best tasting challenge this trip so far. I seriously might. That was awesome. So, really enjoyed that, guys. Of course, until next time, stay happy, hungry, happy eating. And uh, what's about that? So, that, have a good day. And look at this beautiful view here. We are on our way to Carrick Fergus, so just north of Belfast. We got a lovely, gorgeous water view. Now we have a not water view, but super beautiful day here. It's lovely to see the water uh, come up and here we are. In a quarter oh, mile at the roundabout, continue driving straight to stay on shore Driving never shows A2. water that well, but it's a very gorgeous, almost like I call it like basin, the way the water's just shimmering on it. I love it. Reminds me of, uh, of how like East Coast Canada. So we made it up inside, guys. It's crazy to think that this thing uh, essentially was built, or at least mostly built in seven, in 11, 1177, like 900 years ago, whatever, like just absolutely insane, guys. Um, so yeah, they have like obviously some big 
cannons here, um, which the oldest one that is actually still here dates back, and it was like authentic, it dates back to I believe the 1700s. And just look at this, absolutely gorgeous view. They're saying that, you know, obviously having the sea right here, it kept it uh, protected from the south side, the north side being the big, you know, bricks and walls and all that stuff. And let's go see what this has to see. So real quick, we have the keep, which is the uh, thickest and most secure part of the castle with walls 12 feet thick, which is absolutely impressive. They even had a well accessible through, which is pretty cool. And on the stairwell, they even had like a fake stair, which is pretty neat. Again, it was started building in the late uh, 1100s. Looked like this, and then they transitioned to having the big wall, excuse me, sir. And then they transitioned to having a lot more big secure barrier being, you know, less than 100 years later. And then here we have a big, well, I guess, uh, pictation, lifestyle replication, if you will, of the actual castle itself. So it's pretty impressive, uh, to say the least. So we're starting to head in, this is really cool. So this is an example of a 15th century banquet. So your first course would be uh, venison with boiled wheat, mince, I'm not sure if that's like a potato, mince something, brawn, you have like gravy, eggs with violet flour, stuffed capon, so you have ham, eggs, you have three different types of bird being swan, heron, and crane, you'd have sliced uh, meat or bread with spices, you have a pie with currants, dates, etc. you have fritter or pancake. Course two, you would have Forced meat of fowl or pork, so it means like, I'm assuming force fed, so fatty, uh, almond rice mold. You'd have peacock, young rabbit, pheasant, teal, all birds, except the rabbit. You'd have chicken glazed with almond milk. You'd have pigeon, oh, it's funny they have almond milk way back when. Pigeon, venison, gulls, curlew, uh, more ham and pig. You'd have meat with bread and spices, pastries, have fritters. Third course, you'd have jellies, cream and mold, small curlo, curlew, uh, you'd have heron, partridge, more venison, plover, beef, quail, snipe, all kinds of birds we never would eat now. Uh, kind of cheesecake, a cold pastry, fish, eggs, everything. That is nuts. That is, talk about a feast. I'm down with a banquet like that. And something to marvel, look how thick this wall is. <laughs> this is crazy. Like, try to look out the window, and there's literally, I mean, I don't know, that is that is me lying down. That is at least six foot of rock. Yeah, literally, I, you could sleep and lie down there. That is nuts. So, I mean, you have to crawl over to look out the window, but talk about security, geez. And then this would be in a, the banquet hall. Admittingly, it's a little smaller than I thought it would be. That being said, obviously, this would be very full of people. Servants will be bringing items, and this is a you know replication, I guess, or an example of what you know the tray full of everything from swan to pigs to beef to everything would look like. Pretty cool, and that's where the head of household would obviously sit, like the king, I guess. And then, I mean, great view and super thick wall. But this you can actually see the water. And while we're out here, guys, just look at this view. Just imagine what this would look like 800 years ago. I mean, it'd be totally different. Obviously, you have the water, the beautiful bay, the basin here. But look at this, guys. There's a gorgeous big like hill over there, some monument on it. I know that's a very other famous, popular thing in the area. That's quite an overlook. Just very beautiful. I like it. Here we have a, this kind of the top of the keep, very, very big. These are like traditional style roofs, obviously they've been replaced. Little windows at the front where they can be attacked. Big windows at the back by the sea where they couldn't get attacked. And medieval staircase. Definitely quite narrow. And here we have a trip step to trip people and slow them down. So it's about twice the height there, which if you're wearing a coat of, you know, armor, will be very hard to see. As they said, the chainmail alone weighs about 50, 60 pounds, and all your suit is a couple hundred. 
So it's just pretty crazy to think about that. So we just did the tour, which is included in the admission price, um, which was six pounds, so it was, it was well worth it. A uh, little info about the front here, obviously huge big doors, they swung in. The elevation made it hard for enemies to come up with their, um, you know, let's say break-in stuff. Of course, they have little archery slits and everything, and a round wall to attack from all angles. Fun fact, so this here, these slits in the wall, all these slits, these are from soldiers after years and years and years of guards kind of you know rubbing their knives and swords against it which is pretty cool um kind of going into this main area this again with kind of everything we talked about earlier nothing else too 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 crazy um, just that obviously like this big original wall wasn't there and then uh, there's a few more cool things we'll talk about here just momentarily so we are now above the gate this is what they call the murder hole uh, basically, in here, they would be able to drop a gate and they drop fecal matter and other rotting ammo parts on people trying to barricade the doors in hopes that they would then uh, bring sickness and illness upon their um, armies trying to invade. This is also the church cap, uh, the castle chapel here. It's a church, but the Castle Chapel, uh, which is pretty cool. It is uh, apparently the only place in the original castle that would have glass windows, um, whereas the rest of it would have had sheepskin and or animal hide, um, which is very, very interesting to think about because that means the castle would be quite dark. Uh, so yeah, kind of maybe makes you rethink wanting to live in a castle. Dark and cold, I mean, it's made of stone. And we're in Northern Ireland, right on the water. This, which is the food cellar, which is quite large and goes back quite another 15 feet. It was also used as an air raid shelter in the war. And fun fact, so what was actually more valuable than gold back in the day was salt. And I guess depending like how much salt you had, it really va uh, varied your worth. And that's where the term salary comes from, literally salt being like, you know, what you'd be paid with. Uh, you'd be paid with salt, not just for flavor, but also for food preservation. You gotta think, they gotta last through the winter months. They don't have refrigeration, etc. So everything would be very like heavily salted, preserved, you know, dried out, kind of like salt fish. Um, so yeah, you could tell a family or a person's worth by the amount of salt they had. And another key to the castle's success are they had their own well, their own fresh drinking water. This right here is actually the well. They now have a glass under, like, uh, uh, you know, over it. But down below, there's still water in there. And they uh, tested a few years ago. Apparently still clean, drinkable. And I mean, hey, when you're next to the ocean, have your own well is very important. Another really interesting thing we learned is they would have latrines, there'd be about four in the castle, that's their bathroom. And basically it was a plank or a you know, piece of stone you sit on, there'd be a hole. And where would that drop off to? It would actually drop off, basically, you can't see one here, but off the side of the castle, um, which was nice here because it could almost be put towards the water. Um, and it, whenever it was clean and broken up, because all that you know would have to be done, that was done about once a year, it would release so much ammonia that apparently people would hang their clothes on that day and all that ammonia gas being released from the waste would actually kill fleas and lice on their clothing. Now you know. Oh, and they'd only shower about once a year. Once a year. Can you imagine the hygiene standards back then? Definitely a little different. We additionally saw that great big banquet hall. And fun fact, they said the longest feast actually went on for over two weeks. Can you imagine over two weeks of feasting? Uh, they said some of these meals would have like 17 courses. And when we showed how extravagant and large these courses were, I mean, this is like an event. This is not just like a, an, an evening dinner. This is not an afternoon, all day crawfish boy in Louisiana. This is a full day, multiple days, week event. Two weeks even, which is, I mean, can you imagine just feasting on and off basically for two weeks? And officially, Carrick Castle in Carrick Fergus, Northern Ireland. And one of the must-see sites in Carrick Fergus, guys, is the Naka Monument behind me right here. And look how big this is. So this is a World War One 
and do, and World War II monument essentially was started after World War One. Uh, then also commemorate to those in World War II. As we read here, guys, it says, to the glory of God and in proud and affectionate remembrance of the men of County Antrim who fell in the Great War, this memorial is erected by their grateful county. Nobly you fought your knightly virtue provide, provided in blah, 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 provided your memory hollowed in the land you loved. Guys, and this is a stunning, stunning monument. And look at this view. This has to be one of the craziest views in Ireland and or Northern Ireland, at least, you know, maybe exception of mountains. But wow, look at this. This is stunning. Like you can see the whole bay, the basin, and it just goes on and on for miles out into it would be the North Atlantic. But wow, like just stunning. Uh, this is awesome. This view is, is memorable in itself. And then the sheer stature of this monument, which we saw very clearly from the castle, which was over there. I'll try to, I'll point out the castle, but yeah, just giant monument on a very well-suiting hill overseeing the county. There is the castle right there. That, oh, before focused, right there is the castle, which is crazy. So yeah, super cool, amazing view, Naka Monument. And by no means is this all the road, but like all the roads in Ireland and or even we've seen in the UK and London, but guys, this right here, this is a two-way street. I don't know if you guys can conceptualize, but this fits one vehicle. Like, you know, and you get, like, there's a biker. Look how, look how tight it's gonna be with this <laughs> biker. This is the funny thing. Like, this is a two-way street. Look, we're lucky we have a little bit of a V, a, a v but like, that's the whole road. Like, I'm about to go in the ditch. So, let's just say there are some roads, some back roads, which are such a different standard than we often see in North America. I mean, look at this. The, the, the bushes are basically touching me, and this is a two-way street. <laughs> Crazy. Hey, guess what? You rock, yes, you rock. Thank you so much for watching the video. I totally appreciate it. I hope you left me a comment down below. I'd love to read them. I hope you also liked that video. Hey, by the way, click my face. You can subscribe. Yes, subscribe. That way you always get my uploads. You won't miss me when I'm in your town. And I also picked two videos for you. Yes, two videos I know you'll love right here. So watch one of those, hit my face. And with that, thank you so much, you rock.